You said it's really important to designate different roles. Um, you want a standard point of contact, which is often the sous chef who would delegate the orders. So what we're kind of thinking is that the orders from the, um, the POS would come into the sous chef himself, and then he could distribute them either electronically or physically to the rest of the kitchen. Uh, would that be kind of like a good starting point, do you think? Yes, that would be good. Um, that would be all right. I'd like to stay um, as uninvolved in that as possible because I have so many other areas of the kitchen that I have to pay attention to. So if I could have all that kind of sous chef, that would work. Great, then maybe we can set up a time to speak with your sous chef with your permission. Yes. Okay, great, thank you. And then for Claude, um, you didn't really have any ideas as to what you wanted, but do you think if we came in and kind of observed your operations more, like Nolan was saying, we can make some prototypes and get back to you? And then you seeing them in front of you, it might be easier for you to decide what you like and what you don't like. Sounds good. All right, simple enough. And then, Mr. Robinson, um, so you helped us with the flow. Robin, Robin, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Um, you helped us with the flow between the, um, the kitchen staff and the actual wait staff itself. And you're kind of interested in that idea of only being there when necessary itself. So that's something I think we could prototype and get back to you for further validation. Sounds great. Look forward to it. Okay, great. Would you guys have any other questions? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Oh, that's a wrap. Pretty good. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Uh, <clears throat> what we could do is uh, we can ask her. What, what, what did you observe? Me? Yeah? Um, I think, like, at first you started and you asked him... I know the point was for Nolan to ask um, the bartender the questions, but you started and asked him specifically what he wanted, mm -hmm. and you said you had done some background on the chef, but we still didn't kind of build up his ego at all. So that's just like... Well, like, in the introductions, he was like, you know, I yeah. ate at your restaurant in Japan, the sushi was amazing, I dreamed about but it. Really, really, about really, it. really, <laughs> really <laughs> polished him up. And I, yeah, and I think, and yeah. I think that um, the recap was good because we kind of, told them, okay, this is yeah. what we're going to yep. do, and we're going to bring you something back, and mm -hmm. especially for the bartender, like, when you look at things, you'll be able to pick something better, so True. I think that was a good next step, Very for good. sure, to get, like, a decision out of it. Fantastic. Very good observation, man. Fantastic. What about you? Yeah. Um, I thought everything was great, but I just, <laughs> um, the only thing I thought was conflicting was that Tristan came in and, like, built up the chef's ego, was like, yes, love you, blah, blah, and then Nolan was like, Bartender, you're yeah. the most important yeah. person. Yeah, I was kind of, I was worried. I, I, too, I, I just thought this guy's going to throw a fit or something. So, um, and I know that was like the point, but maybe doing it in a little bit of a different way would have been more yeah, I was actually was looking at him, what if he throws a fit right now? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was a good, good move. And I really liked the way Nolan actually tried to build a personal, you know, like I've been through that kind of stuff, you know, like that was pretty cool, you know, to get him mellowed down to a certain extent. Yeah, one question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, another thing. Um, I know it's not intentional, but I thought it was pretty interesting having the different iterations because the thing is that the more face time you have with Mr. Watanabe, like, say you met him on Monday and then the next Monday and then the next Monday, mm -hmm. he's not going to be an ass every Monday, you know? <laughs> one of those Mondays, well, <laughs> to put that happy. mildly, yes. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that the last time that they got him, in addition to Tristan's ego stroking, he was right. like, excellent, very nice and Pretty good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, ma'am. Jaren brings up a really good point. Maybe if you know you're dealing with a person like this, mm -hmm. um, instead of going straight for the interview uh, right away, just kind of build up that relationship with him beforehand right. so that you know when you finally go into the interview, he'll be more likely to give you answers. Perfect. Yes, sir. I mean, also, if you think about his background, again, more going off of what they're saying, if he is Japanese, that's, or Japanese or of Asian descent, that's how they do business. Mm -hmm. So if you think from the cultural aspect and apply that, Perfect. you need to establish a relationship a difference. Or, or even mention anything business-oriented. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let's take a moment to ask the, uh, the, uh, the, the role players themselves. Uh, <clears throat> I think uh, people over here, all of us, found the key to you know, get him to start speaking. So how did that go? You know, that was, it was good. Like, I mean, it was even outside of the role, just knowing somebody you know, like has a connection with you and um, does kind of tell you, you know, what you want to hear. It doesn't, like I just naturally opened up more. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. That's it was, cool. Uh, it was good, but it was uh, difficult to play. I'm like, I'm, 
I'm not I know, I know, you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. I mean, you are very mild compared to what a Japanese chef is, yeah. actually. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> you're, you're pretty mild <laughs> that way. But I mean, we just wanted to see. You know, like, yeah, it's it's tough to be in character. Uh, what about you? What would be the best way to actually get you uh, speaking? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like how he said, you know, the, you know he, he kind of related to me at the beginning and, mm -hmm. and mentioned, you know, at, at the end we could do some observations and stuff. But, but I, I, think, I, I think initially no one mentioned the bar. Mm -hmm. We all mentioned the restaurant. We all mentioned the host. The kitchen and everything, yeah, yes. No one, no one mentioned the bar, so I'm yeah. sitting here going, about me. You know? <laughs> uh, what, what, what do you want me to? Why am I here? You know, yeah. so, so that's why I gave short, short, concise answers. You know? okay. So, so I guess just kind of, kind of doing what Nolan did, elaborating a little more, trying not to, cool. You know, try not to overinflate my ego and you know piss him off even more. But, but, you know, I think, uh, I you should think do that pretty, personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> True that. Pretty good. Well, and what about you, ma'am? And the question is slightly different. We don't want to know. Uh, how, how to get you to answer? We, we just want to know how how to make you speak less. <laughs> because you see, we, we, uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, for a person who's very extrovert, there's a lot of extra information that comes out. A lot of information, but a lot of extra information. So how do we scope it out? What would have worked for you? I I don't know. I tried to like, I tried to try because I could. T it was kind of getting it as a role playing getting annoying how they weren't answering anything and yeah. then I was answering everything because it's for them essentially okay and so trying to chime them in I guess if you want me to do that I can do that but also I know myself I would want to answer all the questions if I know how they are exactly exactly so it's, it's weird yep so maybe um, like when the questions being asked kind of set the expectation like can you give us like a 60 second overview yeah. of what you so, like, the expectation is they're, like, they're looking for something quick. Pretty good. Kind of pretty, good. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yes. I have a question just about, like, Garrett's role. Like, in the last one, is he supposed to be, he's supposed to be, like, more shy and reserved. But, like, Nolan tried to open up with him and whatever. But Garrett's reaction back to him wasn't, like, opening up. He was being more of, like, the chef. Yeah. Like, standoffish. <laughs> That's not really his role. He's, like, a shy person, more reserved. So, by Nolan doing that, he shouldn't just... Be so short back to him. Oh, but the fact is, he actually opened up to the fact for another meeting and to actually, you know, uh, you know, yeah, help him out. I just, I just felt that he was acting kind of like more of the chef's role, like standoffish. Like yeah, of he was a Japanese guy, so it kind of yeah, rubs yeah, off. He's just sort of trying to be reserved. Yeah. Kind of. Cool. All right. So that's <laughs> that's something that uh, we might have to, yeah. Right, pretty good. Uh, anybody else who has some ideas about how to extract just the right of, amount of information from a person like Louis uh, Ro Robertson? Yeah. Right. Um, I have two. Maybe just asking like a little bit more specific questions. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe like yes or no answers instead mm -hmm. of open ended. And then also maybe when she would answer something, I don't know if this is better. Like directing it, like, oh, yeah, okay, so do you think, like, maybe you directing agree. the question away from her and then bringing it back? Okay. Yeah. So maybe that would help. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, pretty cool. You were saying something, ma'am. I was going to say that. Oh, all right, pretty good. Anybody else? More or less the same? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, here's what we're gonna.